After the transformation with the change of amplitude, um, let's now proceed to the transformation when where our period is affected. Okay, so let's have y is equals to 2 sine 1 half x. So take note, the a gives us the amplitude, 1 half gives us the horizontal stretch or compression. So this will affect our period. So the amplitude is absolute value of 2, so we get 2. For the period, our formula is 2 pi over b. 2 pi over b, so 2 pi over 1 half is equal to 4 pi. For the phase shift and vertical shift, still none. So let's start graphing how do we uh, change the period of the graph. So first, we know that our height, the peak, the height of our peak and the depth of our trail will be two units from the, uh, from the center line. But before we do that, let's consider our period because it will affect the wave if it will stretch or it will uh, compress. So from 2 pi, we know that the parent function should have a wave which should end here at 2 pi. But now, our period is 4 pi. So for us to complete one cycle of this graph, we should reach until here, 4 pi. So meaning from the origin until 4 pi, this will cover the entire period of our function here. Okay? So, of course, still same process as what we've done earlier. From origin to 4 pi, we have to divide it to 4 partitions. Luckily, it's already divided into 4 parts, so it's easy. So, we'll again start from the origin and then go up 2 units to the next partition. Okay? So, because of our amplitude, we will go 2 units. Two units from the center line and this point should be parallel to pi because it is our first partition okay go up there and then go back to the center line to our second partition okay next go down to the trow two units down from the center line Then go back to the center line at 4 pi. So there you have it. So that is the graph of y equals to 2 sine 1 half x. Okay? So what if there is a negative sign before the 2? So our amplitude is the absolute value of negative 2, so it's still 2. But of course, our graph will flip over the x-axis. So it's going to look like this. I don't know if it is a DNA or an RNA. I'm bad with signs. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, so let's proceed to a, a, a function which has the phase shift. So let's have y is equal to 2 sine 1 half x minus pi over 2. So this gives us, of course, a horizontal shift or a phase shift of our graph. Um, as you can see, I made a traced graph of the function we've graphed earlier because I want it to be our reference when we do the horizontal shifting because we know the graph of 2 of y is equal to 2 sine 1 half x is this, right? But now, since we have a phase shift, meaning this graph will move horizontally. Okay, so how will it move? The phase shift we have here, since it is x minus pi over 2, this will be a phase shift of pi over 2 units to the right. Okay, to the right. So... As you can see, I made a trace graph, as I've mentioned earlier, and this will greatly help us in easily uh, doing the phase shift of our graph. So, if you can notice, I made these points very obvious, okay? I've boldened them because 
these are actually the key points that we will use to phase shift our graph okay so first the starting point here at the origin the highest point at the peak the point that we have here back to the center line the lowest point at the trough and the last point we have back to the center line so meaning if we have a phase shift of pi over two units to the right all these points that we've mentioned will move pi over two units to the right okay so instead of having this starting uh instead of having this uh position as our starting point we will move pi over two units to the right so it's right here okay so this point will move here okay and of course if such point move the rest of the other points will be affected they will all move pi over two units to the right so from this from here we'll move pi half unit okay pi over two units to the right and then from this point at the center line we will also move pi over two units the lowest point will move pi over two units four pi the point here at four pi will also move pi over two units so we'll have it here so we will end at that point okay if you're asking me how we're how was I able to do these coordinates with uh, fractions? Um, you know, it's like your unit circle. Diba? You have pi over 2. So it's 1 pi over 2. 2 pi over 2 is pi. And then 3 pi over 2. 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi. 5 pi over 2. 6 pi over 2 is 3 pi. 7 pi over 2. And then... 8 pi over 2 is 4 pi, 9 pi over 2, and then 10 pi over 2 is 5 pi. So it's just like counting 1 to 10. Okay? Easy peasy. So next, we know that we have moved the starting point there. This will also move, so it will be parallel to 3 pi over 2. And then this will move here. Okay? The lowest point will move here. And then the point here at the center line will move here. Okay, so let us connect the dots. There you go. So the solid graph that I've made is the graph of y is equals to 2 sine 1 half x minus 2. So as you can see, from the trace graph we have here, the graph just moved as our phase shift dictates us, pi over 2 units to the right. Okay, finally, the last uh, property that we haven't discussed yet, and that is the vertical shift. So, as you've noticed, the function that we are graphing is actually building up, right, from uh, 2 sine x, it became 2 sine 1 half x, and then so on and so forth until we have completed all the properties that we need uh, in graphing trigonometric functions. So we have now the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and the vertical shift. We all have these transformations. So as you can see, again, I've left the traced graph of our previous graph, which is y equal to 2 sine 1 half x minus pi over 2 and now there is an addition which is the vertical shift so we have the plus one right here so um, from uh, from the video uh, I've made in the introduction of periodic functions we know that if we have a vertical shift we are considering the center line right now our center line from the previous graph is the x-axis and since we have 
positive one here, a plus one here, which indicates our vertical shift, which is one unit up, okay? So our center line will also move one unit upwards. So from the x-axis, we'll have a center line here. So we are considering this center line, okay? So this is now our center line. So, of course, if our center line will be here at y equals 1, okay, of course, our graph will also move there, okay? So, this is the starting point. This is where our starting point is. It will move up one unit, okay? On our new center line which is y equals 1 and then this point of course if the first point here moved up it should also move up there okay next the point here on our center line will move up one unit to our new center line and then the trow the lowest point here at the trow will also move one unit up okay and then lastly this point from the center line will move up one unit to our new center line okay so i'm drawing these arrows so that you could visually see that there will be a vertical movement so from this point we go up here the next point is there so these are the new set of points that we're going to graph for our function right here. So let's connect the dots. Okay, so the solid graph is the graph of y equals 2 sine 1 half x minus pi over 2 plus 1. Now, what if there is a negative? Okay, in front. So, we know that our graph will be reflected across the x-axis, right, for the parent function. But in this case, since we have already a vertical shifting, therefore, it will be reflected across our new center line. Okay, since we're going to do a reflection of a graph, I will make the reflected graph a uh, trace graph okay so as you can see i removed the trace graph earlier okay to avoid confusion so this is the graph of this function and then since i've put a negative sign in front of it so it means there will be a reflection but it is no longer a reflection across the x-axis since we have already a vertical shift so it will be a reflection across our new center line which is y equals one all right so we know that this point is two units from the center line, so we also need a point reflected across it. So from the center line, count two units. That will be the reflection of this point. Okay? And with this point, it's on the center line, so we are good. And then the throw. Two units above the center line. This is our new center line. One, two. Okay, and then connect. I'm going to make it a trace graph. Okay, so I hope that you understood well how it works.